Hello, I'm Becky Strachan. I'm from Northumbria University uh, in Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. Uh, and I'm with Itaro Mmbolu, who's also from Newcastle, and joining me on my left. Um, and also Araquaya Paxoto, uh, who comes from Rio de Janeiro, and Maria Teresa Restivo from the University of Porto. And we wanted to do a round table today to look at addressing the gender gap. And as part of that, it will be quite interactive. We want you to join in and we want to have your views and discussion on this and feed back to us so we can have a think about how we take things forward. Um, we're going to start off by just explaining a bit about ourselves and give some background. Uh, and then we'd like to do a bit of interactive work with you. Uh, does this work? No. Okay. Two things. Um, the quotes up there, one from Ban Ki-moon on achieving gender equality is everyone's responsibility. And that was part of my plea at the beginning was to say to you, uh, please stay. Uh, we do have a gender issue and we have a diversity issue in uh, engineering and technology. Uh, and so it's very important and it, it's all of us. Uh, we can all take steps to address that. Okay, uh, I want to start off just by um, introducing myself. I'm a professor of digital technology and education. I started off with a degree in chemistry, uh, and it was very much at the early stages when um, computers weren't around. I'm not quite sure why, why my slideshow is going on. Um, yeah, uh, and then I went on to do one of the first MSCs in computing studies in the UK. Uh, I did my PhD on performance of computer networks, and I've always been interested in the use of technology for end users. Uh, and I've carried that on now and moved far more into using digital technology for education. Um, I think in terms of my own experiences, one of the things I'd like to say is, is that as an academic, it is a really interesting career. Uh, I did a uh, talk recently to sixth form students and I was going to do a typical day and then I realized I don't have a typical day. So one of the really interesting things is I actually get paid to learn and to explore and I think that's actually wonderful and I don't have, you know, uh, one day that's the same as another. I've also been able to uh, travel quite a lot and meet lots of people and work with people from a whole set of different disciplines, computing actually underpins so many of the disciplines that you can actually work with people from a whole range of subjects, which is great. I think two of the things that I've probably had to learn over the years, one is to focus, because I enjoy loads of things, and find loads of things interesting, and therefore I really don't um, stick to one thing, and I've probably had to focus more than I uh, needed to to get on uh, in it. And I think one of the other things is to just try things out and take risks. We're here to learn. We're here to explore. That's what we get paid to do, investigate, try things out. Things do go wrong, okay? But it doesn't matter. And I, I worry sometimes that we're trying to create too safe a world. Um, on that note, I'm going to pass on to um, our first uh, Araquaya, who's going to talk uh, a bit about her background and, and her experience of gender and, and diversity. Hi, my name is Arukia. I am a professor in mathematics and computer. I give class for more than 15 years. I work in Brazil. We spent some time last year in the United States, one year. And I grew up in the, I was a teenager in the 18s. And I remember clearly in the 18s when this computer looks to be so beautiful. So imagine a young girl. 14, 16, looking for what I do, what I do in the university, and computer in the 18s like to a big promise, like the big new thing, and then decided to enter the university to do this 10 career. I started mathematics, and to me it was something like really I, I always dreamed to be a research. I never think to be a professor. Incredible because now I'm a professor. But um, I did not feel like at, at, same, at this point that the computer is not like me. It's just my dream, I, that really dream of my life to be a research in something technical stuff. But of course, doing my career in technical field, 
with mathematics, computer engineering, I have to face the many uh, we, we women, we have to prove always that we are able to do something. And I think that all women in this room knows this. We just not uh, even to be prepared, even to be obviously prepared, you have to show that we are prepared to do things. That's incredible. Because I, I saw clearly with my colleagues that they don't have to, to show that they are able to do things that they are obviously prepared to do. And I learned in my career that I have to show all the time that I'm able to do things. And in my case, looking to be much more younger than I uh, always been, uh, people look to me, always see a student. In my year in the United States last year, they always think that I was a graduate student. And every time that I say, no, I'm visiting faculty, they look to me like, visiting faculty? Like, but you, you look like a undergraduate a graduate student. Then I realized that it was not exactly a like great thing. I, of course, that I like to people confuse me with my former students. I love this in my personal life. But as a professional, to realize that they always look to me and cannot see a professor in a bad way, I saw, well, that's the rest of my life. I have to prove that I'm able to do my things. And I will always have to show them I am a professor. I'm able to do many things in the same way that I have been for many time, for a long time. I'm now a member of the council, ACMW. ACM have a council about women. It's ACM Council for Women. And my role is SIG liaison. I have to connect the other SIGs and do joint work about women in our SIG conference. And one thing that I discovered really beautiful in my life, that I, something that I never could imagine when I, uh, my dreams to be a resource, that's to be a professor is something really beautiful. And as a professor, I won two prizes in Brazil as advisor of undergraduate students, national prize in Mathematical Institute, uh, IMPA. The Mathematical Institutes for ones that are mathematicians is the institute that four years ago, our research from this place wins the mid Feeds Medal. Arthur Ruin was the field, uh, Feeds Medal some time ago. Then in Brazil is a big prize. You have a uh, prize as advisor in this place. And I discovered that uh, work with my students is like to be happy twice. Happy with um, the things that I can do as a resource, and to see my students being developed in their career, to see that they are really different from me, they are not like me. They have their goals, they have their point of view. And as a professor, with all my background, with experience for what I have to pass, I was always really careful to give it support for men and women. And for my former students, the number of men and women is like the same. Because in undergraduate courses in Brazil, you have a better number of students than you have in graduate students. Uh, you have many steps when you miss women in this process. One is to enter the university, the others is when you go from the undergraduate to graduate level, and the other when the students enter the market. In every step, when many students show this, when you measure the number of women, in every step you are losing women. Then to me it's a great victory when I saw my students doing career. And last month, two of my former students finished their PhD. And it's something like, uh, I, when I finished my PhD, I was so happy and I get a help again with my students. Then working as a professor show me that I can be happy with my own things and can be happy also again when I saw my students' success 
Indica here. And that is me. Okay, my name is Itore Membolu. I'm a doctoral researcher at Northumbria University of the Faculty of Engineering and Environment. Um, I have a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, and um, I have my master's degree in International Business, Energy and Petroleum. I also have a Master of Philosophy in Strategic Management and I'm currently on my doctoral um, research degree. Um, so my experiences as a female engineer, I would like to talk about it in, in three different aspects, what attracted me to the industry, um, to the profession, challenges I've faced, and the good things that I've experienced about it. So um, from a very young age, I have been um, attracted, I have admired the profession, the engineering profession. Uh, my father is an engineer, so from a very young age I had a conception or an idea of what engineering could be. So I liked that it was hands-on, I liked that it, was, it involved problem solving, I liked also that it involved calculations and maths. But one thing was that um, I, I always thought that engineers were just males because from the um, cultural background that I am from, that's in Nigeria, um, at that age, I hadn't really come across many female engineers. So I'd like to highlight the importance of um, culture on young people because at that age, I haven't had any experience, lived experiences, so I had to depend on the things that were around me, my environment and the culture around me. And because all I saw were male engineers, subconsciously, I just assumed that engineers were all males. So in as much as I liked the profession, I admired it, I never considered it as something for me as a female. Until one day, when I was about seven, I was with my dad and we were walking down and we saw a group of engineers in their coveralls and all, and I saw a female engineer in, her, in the midst and I was like, oh, so women could be an engineer, uh, could be an engineer, a woman could be an engineer. So it was, it was, it had a profound effect on me. Um, like yesterday in one of the um, sessions uh, on competencies, knowledge competencies, um, Dr. Michaela, she highlighted one of the uh, works of a poet, Maya Angelou, that people forget what you say, people forget what you do, but they wouldn't forget how you made them feel. So um, this, this particular event had a profound effect on me and it highlights the importance of role models. So in as much as I can't remember the woman's face, I can't remember what she, what, oh, I didn't know her, but it had a profound effect on me. And since then, I knew that, okay, so engineers could be females, and then I aspired to be an engineer. So that was a turning point for me to be an engineer. And so I've, I currently would also, I also try to work with young, young females to try and encourage them because, and I also highlight the importance of role models in the discipline. So some of the challenges I experienced doing, um, studying for my undergraduate degree in Nigeria. I was in a class of over um, 70 males in the year group and we're less than 6% females. So again, it highlighted that stereotype, it reinforced the stereotype that maybe this wasn't for people like me, but because I came from a background where I had, um, I had people in science in the family and I had seen someone as a female engineer, I knew it was possible. But it, also, it still reinforced that. And like Arukai mentioned, I always had to show that I was competent at every, point of, uh, at every point of the time. Anytime you meet maybe a new faculty or even with the peer groups, I always had to show that I could do what other, um, other male counterparts could do. And also there was also the cultural attitude of um, females um, family obligations and the 
working environment, especially for like an engineering degree, there was that, there's always that attitude perception that it's mutually exclusive, that you should either choose one or the other. But this is not true. And gradually, the narrative is changing, and people are beginning to know that you could balance the two, and it's something that could be done. So again, looking at the cultural aspects and also looking at role models. But in as much as those challenges were there, there were also the good aspects. I had very good support, family support, and then currently I'm working in Northumbria University, and I'm working with very amazing people that are aware of the importance of um, diversity and um, equality in engineering, so it's, it's been good. And also, there are also opportunities that are available for um, females, which is something that is also good to highlight a possible network so that they know that it's available and they can tap into it. Because I have been recipient of a couple of scholarships for my undergraduate degree. I was a recipient of the Federal Government of Nigeria undergraduate scholarship in engineering. So I was a recipient of that for my Master's of Philosophy. I also got a scholarship for that. And I'm currently um, doing my doctoral research on scholarship. So these opportunities are also there. So it's also important that young people know that these opportunities are available. So it's really been good. So in as much as there are challenges, like the fact that this um, round table is happening is showing that the narrative is changing and things are changing. So it's something that we could work on. Great. Thanks, Itre. Okay, was nearest. Uh, well, in my case, I think I'm in a little bit different position because, uh, well, I'm the oldest one. <laughs> so, and this does not make me to, to look at the career and to show you my feelings at present, but more to look to my career and uh, show you what I feel about it. Uh, as uh, the past, uh, and uh, very short end. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I, I, in order to, to be careful with uh, the time I was recommended, um, uh, I, I realized that I, I should give some, take some notes for me in order to tell you what I would like to tell uh, in terms of a synthesis, of course. So the three dimensions I will look at is are uh, what attracted me for this, this uh, profession, and the ch challenges I found, uh, and uh, the good aspects I also uh, retain from them. So I'm a solid state physicist and a PhD in engineering sciences. Uh, I, I am a senior member of the Faculty of Engineering of University of Port since 1988. And uh, uh, there, I have been doing uh, research and teaching. Uh, uh, I, am, I have to be proud to be a member of what is called in Portugal the democratic revolutionary generation. It was my generation that brought democracy into Portugal after the dictatorial regime. I was used to try to questioning, thinking freely, trying to think freely, fighting against the power attitudes, and run away from police. I have done it. So I was uh, early engaged also with an important and known by then uh, research group uh, during the last two years of my degree. And I was lucky. Uh, so, uh, as passionately curious, freely thinker, uh, inquiring person, someone trying to understand with relative freedom inside, uh, fighting for ideal, ideals, I was attracted by, uh, by the way I followed uh, in the academy. Uh, away with unknown challenges, 
where together with my colleagues, those young people from, uh, of freedom in Portugal, we were trying to uh, take uh, this message and the, the opportunities that uh, it gave us to the youngest to look at things in a different way. So by teaching, researching, innovating, developing, and living in a community of smart people, of course. <clears throat> so I, I got a lot of challenges in my life that some of them were more or less admitted in the beginning, but many of them were totally different of what I was thinking. Uh, and then the, one of the challenges was the capacity of working with a group, I mean, to, to form a group. And then to motivate people, which is really difficult. Um, to accept challenges by orienting tasks to targets and reaching them with some innovation. To involve young uh, students and recent graduates in many of the activities sometimes to introduce and lead them in the international community. To have results from my involvement that will last more than me. The most difficult to be accepted in a strong community as leader, the mechanical engineering community. And the most uh, fundamental goal, to be useful to the society with different tributes. So looking back, I think I have a lot of good aspects of my experience which I would like to share with you, and just to conclude that it was good. It has been good. So, uh, uh, good aspects to the experience so far, additionally to research and teaching. I should tell you that I experienced to many positions and situations like a uh, member of government of uh, bodies, uh, government bodies of the university and faculty, and it was a great uh, uh, experience. Coordinator of a research unit within the Portuguese Science Foundation, unit coordinator of an U uh, Porto uh, Insti Interface Institute, president of educational societies either in, in Portugal or international, executive committee of international societies, author or co-author of books published either at national level or international, um, national and international awards, either in engineering or in research, patent holder at national and international uh, level, some end of commercialization uh, very soon, so uh, a tribute for the society as well, uh, integrating interesting networks of different contexts and activities, again, at international and national level, education and research. And, uh, uh, and if anyone would ask me, would you do it again? I would say yes, I will, I would. Many things I would do in a different way, of course, knowing what I learned, but I would do it again, without financial profits, just as I have done. The first attitude should be to reinforce uh, my believing on myself. I mean, I have to be, to, to believe better in myself, and that was the only thing I would have done different possibly. Okay, and thank you. Thank you, Jason.